What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of Inkscape, version 3.3. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find more information on the newest version of Inkscape by going to the Inkscape blog and reading their Inkscape 3.3 post that's located on that page. I will link to that in the notes down below um, if you're looking for that as well. In addition, you can also watch the video on their YouTube channel where they talk through some of the new features that are contained inside of Inkscape version 3.3. So I will link to that below as well. But I thought we could hit some of the highlights and talk about kind of how they work. So first off, probably their biggest new feature in this one is the ability to add site context models to your renderings. And so I've got an example model that I've downloaded from the 3D Warehouse. This is the training center slash hotel slash convention center from Taz 1985. So if you want to download that and follow along, you can. But let's say that we've got this building Right here, we want to bring it into Inkscape and we want to add some site context. So what we can do is first off, let's start Inkscape. All right, so let's say we want to add some site context to this model. Well, what we can do is we can go up to this button right here, click on the option for site context. And it's going to ask us to add site context. So we're going to click on this button right here. That's going to pop up a window that's going to allow us to bring in site context data. And so then let's say that we were to pick a location like this one, and we're gonna leave on things like buildings and landmarks, streets and sidewalks, and topography. And then we're gonna click on the option for import. And so when we do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to import our site context data directly into the Inkscape window right here. All right, so notice what that did is that actually brought in all of this geographical context around our building from OpenStreetMap. So not only has this added things like your roads, it's also added things like buildings around your location, which is ridiculously cool and ridiculously fast, by the way, um, for creating like a whole city. But so one of the cool things about this is first off, notice how this brings in all of these different blocks with actual like buildings and addresses. So you can select those, you can toggle them on and off. So let's say for example, you wanted this building right here, you can click on it and you can actually toggle this on and off right here. Um, you can also see like all the different streets and roads right here. So, and those are actually labeled based on their actual address, which again is ridiculously cool. I don't think I've seen an open street map uh, integration that actually does this. Um, one other thing that you can do with this is, so if you look at my building and where it's sitting, you can tell that it's sitting over some roads in here. Well, there's an option in here. If we click on this to edit our site context, you can actually take your site context and drag it around in order to relocate your building. So you can use this to adjust your building rotation on the site, as well as the location on the site really quickly. This is one of the better integrations of site context data I've seen, especially in a rendering program. So I'm super impressed with what you can do with this integration. So in addition, they've also upgraded their reflection engine. So now you can actually see transparent materials in your reflections. So if you notice the difference between the glazing before and now, um, if we look at, if we go back to the split screen right here, notice how you're actually seeing the reflections off of this reflective material in here. So this is bouncing light off of one piece of glass and then it's bouncing reflections off of another piece of glass and you can see the sky off of that piece of glass. So that is a significant improvement in the way that reflections are rendered inside of Inkscape. So that's really exciting if you are rendering something where you need to see the way that the light bounces. Um, one thing to note about that is that's only going to work if you use a graphics card that supports um, ray tracing. So either the NVIDIA RTX series or the AMD RX um, series graphics cards. So they've also expanded their asset library with a number of new educational themed um, assets. So I, I think that the way that they're doing this is interesting. I really like it because what they're doing is they're adding packs that are, uh, they're adding assets that are topic based, which um, is something that if you do like architectural planning for educational institutions or anything like that, um, having a big collection of those all come in at once really expands this and makes it kind of like the tool or one of the better tools for that kind of modeling. So I think from an architectural standpoint, it's really smart the way that they're doing this. So they've also added a number of really realistic 3D people to their library. Those are going to be really realistic people models. So if we look at those inside of our actual rendering, 
So if you look at those people models inside your actual rendering, they're actually 3D people um, that are textured. Um, they're pretty high quality people assets. So if you are adding people as context inside your models, um, notice how these are going to give you a lot of options for different kinds of people you can add to your scenes. So if you do any kind of post-processing in Photoshop, they've added the alpha channel export. So you can export these with an automatically applied um, background filter on this so that you can add like your own skies and other things like that in the background. So if you do any kind of post-processing, this is gonna be a huge time saver because it just kind of sets that up automatically and then you can just drop your sky images or background images in in your photo editor. So I think one of the things that's always been a little bit frustrating in the past is sometimes you wanna have Enscape kind of like in your window here um, so that you can see your rendering, but then you also wanna be able to work in your SketchUp model. Well, up to this point, what that's meant is you have to keep like jumping back and forth or work in multiple monitors. However, now, if you go into this option right here, click on the little gear and go down to your preferences, there's an option for pin Enscape window on top of the host application. What that means is that means that if you mark that, and now if you click inside of SketchUp like this, so let's say that I wanted to add a person in here, for example, but notice how now, my Enscape window is staying on top of SketchUp even if I go inside of SketchUp and start adding things. So that means it's really easy to come in here and make changes in SketchUp and actually see them reflected inside of Enscape by keeping this window up um, on top of SketchUp. So that pin to the top, I think, is something that uh, everyone's been waiting for for a while. I'm super excited to see it finally added to Enscape. All right, so another cool functionality is they've added the ability to take a material. So let's say we're to select this one right here and let's pop up our Enscape materials editor. So let's say we've got this material right here and we wanna replace that with a different material from our Enscape material library. Well, now you can come in here and you can just directly right click on a material. You can click on the option for replace with Enscape material. That's gonna pop up your Enscape material browser. And so let's say we wanted to replace this with like a brick material. And so what we can do is we can click on this brick material right here. Notice how it's actually previewing it in this window right here. But basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna swap out that material and you can see it in your preview right here. If you decide that you like that, you can just click on the option to replace. And so when you click on the option to replace, notice how that color or that material got replaced inside of Enscape with this brick material from the Enscape material library. So that's actually a really like ridiculously fast way to replace SketchUp materials with Enscape materials. So again, if we were to do it a second time, so I'm just going to select this right here. And let's say I wanted to replace this gray material with like a concrete. I could just right click on it pick a concrete and you'll see it reflected in your render right here and then when you have something that you like you can click on the option for replace and you're done so swapping out materials is really fast using that new function all right, so they've also done some camera sync optimization for Revit and ARCHICAD users. I have no idea how big of a deal this is because I haven't really used Enscape for Revit, but this does have some camera syncing and improvements um, for Revit and ARCHICAD. So if you are using those softwares, make sure you go check that out. See if it's improved your workflow and let me know in the comments down below. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this new version. Um, I'm particularly excited about the site context, um, the pinning and the replacement of materials, but I'd love to hear what you think as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.